Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so anyway, I, I did this test and they brought me in for a month of trial and because um, I guess at the time they were finding, finding a hard, hard time finding new people, finding people who can hit the style. Um, and I have to say now it's kind of a fluke that I got into doing character design right away. I know a lot of people want to do that and that's awesome and it's good but it's, it's a really hard job to get because there's usually, there's usually only like one to two people per TV show that do design. So, um, and this, they already had Three designers. They had Glenn Muir, Connie, they had Derek Wyatt, and Justin. So when I came in, they trained me. And um, <laughs> they trained Ray, me. Can I can I go back? You think you made a really important point that's actually really good for them to, to hear, which is, uh, you know, how many of you guys want to go to art school and learn, you know, do your art school, and how much? How many of you guys want to learn on your own? So how, how the, the school people here, art and then school the people, people school, and then the people want to learn on your own. Because I think you know it's. it's you know, I think your story is pretty interesting because there's like two schools of camp that I found in the industry you know, that I've been in. There's people who go to school and they get an incredible education, incredible foundation, you know, they do all their work, they have great portfolios, and there are people who go on their own and have equally good portfolios and equally good work. And when I've kind of divided them into like, you know, my loose category, it really depends on how self-motivated you are. I mean, there are really great artists who just can't push themselves. And that's, that's just a personality type, there's nothing wrong with it. But if you give them assignments, you give them work to do, they put out spectacular work, spectacular work. But during their summer when they're off, they'll, you know, they'll do nothing, absolutely nothing. And then there are people on the outside who, if they're artists and they're really, really good, they might do like one drawing a year and be like, dude, I'm a total artist. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you can't really survive. But I think, you know, her case story is really great because, you know, she clearly had a passion, she had a drive, she had a family reason that were like forcing her to draw. So I think, you know, one thing you have to do is really really look at yourself, you know, am I self-motivated? Am I able to go out there and by myself, self-educate myself about the foundations, really get wide influences, do the research, and be prepared to compete on the world market level? And if someone says to you, can you draw like Tintin? Can you draw like Teen Titans? You know, can you draw like Trigon? Can you draw like South Park? You know, can you draw like Family Guy? Then you've studied all those, and you can do it. And can you paint in wash? And can you paint in watercolor? And can you do one and two and three point perspective? I mean, some people can just, they'll just go into a bookstore and get it on their own. Some people will just draw Naruto forever. <laughs> and, you know, I, I, I'm terrible to say, but I don't feel like those are the kind of people who are going to keep getting work if you come in your portfolio is like all fan of Yeah, um, sorry, I'm trying to remember where I was at. <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean to break out. Yeah, like, anyway. Especially for them, I thought it was important. Well, I guess here. I'll go in more into that then. Um, but, yeah, um, it doesn't matter where you went to school or if you didn't go to school. As long as you put in the work, as you suddenly study hard, you take people. If someone critiques you, like take that as a positive thing. Like that's what I need to work on. Um, because I do know people who've gone to college and they come out and they just expect it to be handed to them. But I also know people that. This is another thing we were talking about earlier today. I have a couple of friends, like close friends, and I want them to do well, but. They want to work in character design, and they're already working as like board artists and stuff in other shows, and they just want to be designers. And I tell them, okay, cool. Well, give me your portfolio. Well, I don't have one. You need to draw after work, then. You need to work on it because you need to show that you can do turnarounds. That you can you can do what they need. And it's come up where I I need to give freelance because we're behind or something. And like I'm like, well, I can recommend my friend, and they're like, what's their portfolio? And I'm like. You know, so I mean, like I, my friend Arenio and you too. I, okay, like, oh, everybody, that's Alan wants. Everybody yeah. say hi to Actually, Alan. Actually, I'm gonna pass it to Alan because he's one of them that like I don't think he had. You didn't have that foundation, but he's awesome. <laughs> he's so awesome. So I'm just like, <laughs> Alan, Alan, how did you get into animation? I I got in with um, well. My parents own a toy store, so when the economy was still pretty good, I get like a steady flow of animators going into my parents' store. So at the time I was like around 20. I always have a portfolio that I carry around, so at some point I bumped into a prop artist, took a look at my portfolio, and he's like, oh, that's pretty good. Well, let's bring it into my studio and check it out and see if uh, they can use you. So. Um, 
At the time, there was a director named Chris Berkeley who saw my portfolio and decided that maybe this guy can do the job. So that's how I got in. I have no training or any sort. I just drew. So it can happen, but like afterward, when I got into the job, I start learning how to do the things and just put in a lot of hard work. And um, I think Eric said something um, pretty true is like, you gotta push yourself. I mean, like I still, I draw a full eight hour day. When I go home, I still draw. So you just have to be always on top of your game because you are competing at the, the world level. Everyone wants your job and you gotta be ready. And if you're not ready, then just won't get it. So it doesn't matter what school, because basically school or no school is just get you ready to do the job. That's all, that's all it, that is. So that's the end of what I have to say. I don't know how everybody got in. Um, what we'll do is we're gonna do the panel into two categories. Uh, the first one is knowledge and the second is network. So um, first off is knowledge, knowing your environment, knowing what, what you're getting yourself into. Um, so the, right now, like, we're, we'll talk about like, what kind of different positions we have for animation. Um, there's a, the, you, know, you have your artist category, you have your production category, you have your post-production category, and you have an executive. Um, so that, that's how I categorize, but I guess everybody can go, kind of go off on what they do or what they know. In terms of the positions, um, let's say uh, Eric, you can do uh, the executive category because you, you're, you know, experience of that. And then uh, George, a writer, Eugene, writer, uh, Mark, we can do production. And then Alan and Brianne will do do the artist side. So uh, yeah. Well, I'll make this quick. I know there's not too many executives over this nice guy in the blue suit right here. So I'll address you directly. <laughs> No, me too. Oh, and you too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and you, oh, there's a couple executives. I brought my resume with me too. Thank oh. you. <laughs> there's your new executive right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, being executive in animation is, is pretty similar to being executive in the film and TV world. And, uh, you know, I like to tell people because, you know, I still can't make my parents understand what a producer is. They still don't get it. But, I mean, I like to think of it, you know, like when you're playing a video game and there's like four or five skill sets and like you know, there's like different power levels and stuff like that. So, you know, when a producer and executive is out there, you know, there's things like your understanding of the marketplace, which is, you know, knowing what current TV shows and films are out there, what is being bought and sold, what is the current climate of culture, what kind of things need to be sold. That, that sense is, you know, one ability. The next ability is actually your ability to understand money and finance, and that's very key uh, in understanding how how money actually flows, how cash flow happens, how, how people share and are rewarded in the entertainment industry. So your financial literacy is actually very important. Um, actually, the most important, like right in the middle, like if this were a Street Fighter, this is like your strength, it's actually communication. Communication as an executive is everything. And when it comes to development, I was able to actually refine it down to simply and clearly stating your opinion almost all the time is how people get to know you. So if they say, like, what do you think of this movie? What do you think of that film? What do you think of this art? If you can clearly state your opinion, you actually know what your opinion is, and then to another person, whether that be another executive, an artist, distributor, if you can then pass that information to that person, you suddenly become an incredibly valuable person in the system. Because as these guys all know, you know, um, animation is a you know, multi-person adventure. There's 30, 50 people working on, and if the leader or the producer executive will, can't pass the message, of what needs to be done today, what needs to be done in the week, what needs to be done in the month, then the entire ship is leaderless. So actually, you know, so between marketplace understanding, financial literacy, communication, and then after that is probably like, to be honest, like your social smoothness. You know I mean? Being a executive is being a politician. So you have to shake hands with personalities of all types. You have to know adjust your style. You have to know when you should listen and when you should talk. And you have to know when a different culture internationally defines how a meeting should be run. 